We're going to get right into the word of the Lord on today. And uh, we're going to be, as I said, this will be the first message uh, in uh, a series that we're going to start on today. And uh, we'd like to invite your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture uh, that uh, we'll jump off into uh, on today. And that's 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. And uh, it says there in the New King James Version, for the weapons of our warfare yes. are not carnal, yes. but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And usually that's where we stop. And that's what I have memorized. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down uh, imagination. One, one translation say imagination, arguments. Yeah. A lot of the battle, a lot of the spiritual battle takes place in our mind. And it is, and, and, and that's, that, that's where the enemy likes to wage warfare. It is a battle for our souls, but it is a battle that is fought in our minds. And, and, and so uh, casting down imaginations or arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And, 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 and I just want to pause here for a moment, and I'm not going to be real long, but we're going to get into the meat of this. But every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, there's a battle that takes place in our mind. And it's a battle of ideas. And the enemy does not want you to know who God really is. Amen. Yes, yes. 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 Because if we would ever begin to, 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 to gain some insight and some understanding into who God really is, it would revolutionize the way that we live. Yes. Yes. That's how cults get started by uh, uh, twisting and, and, and misunderstanding who God is. Yes. That's how false religions have gotten established by people not really understanding and knowing who God is. And the enemy would like to keep us in the dark as to who God really is. Bringing every thought captive or into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And you notice, hey amen, I have that underlined because we're going to be talking about in this uh, uh, sermon series, we're going to be talking about obedience and, and, and what a powerful weapon obedience is. And as I said, we usually stop there, but we go a little further, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. And in 2 Corinthians 10 and 6, it says there that... Uh, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I want you to repeat that verse after me if you would. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is is fulfilled. You see, a lot of times we see stuff that's wrong in other people. We see stuff that needs to be fixed in other people. And a lot of times, you know, we'll, we we want to try to fix other people, but the, the 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 spiritual weapon that we are are are, are going to be talking about today, uh, one of the things that we find is that we won't be ready until 
our own obedience is fulfilled. Yes. We're trying to fix other people when we broke ourselves. Jesus said, before you try to take the, 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 the uh, speck out of your brother's eye, get the log out of your eye. And, 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 and this thing, this, this particular verse of scripture, uh, it is always weighed on my mind whenever I would, you know, we quote, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Yes. We've got spiritual weapons. And it's one thing about it, uh, if you've got powerful weapons, then it's on you if you, you're armed and, 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 and able to defend yourself and you don't use the weapons that are available to you. Yes. It's on us. Yes, Lord. And, 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 and I think that uh, we need to delve, we, we need to become people of the word and we need to delve into uh, the word of God a little bit deeper to understand and appreciate the power of the weapon of obedience. Yes, Lord. We need to delve into that. A lot of us, we don't realize the destruction and the damage. Yes. That disobedience has caused yes. in our lives. Yes. And so as we go into it, amen, we want to talk about the spiritual weapon of obedience. Yes. The spiritual weapon of obedience. And we want to look at the place that obedience has in Scripture. Yes, Lord. You know, the Bible talks a lot about obedience, a lot more than a lot of us realize. And, uh, and 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 and, and I, what I'm hoping in this uh, sermon series is that this is going to help to sensitize us uh, and make us aware of the importance of our own conduct, yeah. of our own. Uh, 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 it's, it's just like uh, the the example that I would use would be: uh, you ever notice when you get a different automobile? Uh, before you get that the, the, the automobile that you got before you got it you might not have been paying attention to that particular model or brand or whatever but when you get one or somebody you know gets one all of a sudden you begin to see them all over town that's because you you, you become aware of it and what I want us to do and, and what I'm trying to do I, I, I want to help me and I want to help you we want to become more aware of the importance of of obedience Amen. and obedience has a place in the scripture and uh, we're going to begin amen in paradise or in the garden of Eden and one of the things that we find uh, in the garden of Eden uh, is the fact and, and, and uh, my verse there uh, didn't come through but I will quote it oh yes it did okay uh, one of the verses is a little uh, is Genesis two sixteen, and in Genesis two sixteen, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, "Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat." Amen. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now, that's in Genesis 2 and 16. And in Genesis 3 and 11, we're already in trouble. <laughs> Didn't take long for man to get in trouble. And, 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 and so in uh, Genesis uh, 3 and 11, this is God speaking to the man again. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And what you need to understand, we're starting in, in, in Genesis in paradise. And what I want you to notice, amen, I want you to note how obedience to the command is the one virtue of paradise. The only law that Adam had was obedience to one command. Yes. Right. 
It was the one conditions of man, uh, the one condition for uh, man to abide in the garden. It was the one thing that the creator asked of him. There's nothing said in the garden about faith or uh, humility or love, but obedience includes it all. Yes. You need to hear what I'm saying. Right. Amen. As the supreme, uh, as supreme as the claim and the authority of God is the demand for obedience as the one thing that, amen, is to decide man's destiny. In the life of a man, to obey is the one thing that is needful. It was disobedience that drove them out of the Garden of Eden. Yes, Lord. And as I said before, the only demand in paradise was obedience to the one command of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So, so we began uh, with paradise. And what we're going to do is uh, let's go to the amen. Uh, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Let's go to the last book of the Bible. Book of Revelation. And uh, let's go to the last chapter in the book of Revelation. And that's chapter 22. And in Revelation 22 and 14, it says there, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Amen. So here in Revelations 22 and 14, we started in paradise. Amen. Paradise that was lost. And here, amen, in Revelations, we're going to paradise gain. And what you see is that from the beginning of God's revelation to the end, from paradise lost to paradise regained, the law is unchangeable. Yes. It is only obedience that gives access to the tree of life. Yes. And the favor of God. Yes. I need to repeat that again. If you're taking some notes, amen, you need to, amen, put that down. It is only obedience that gives access to the tree of life and the favor of God. And if you ask how, uh, how, how, how did, you, you see, in Genesis, man was driven out lest he partake of the tree of life. Yes, yes. In Revelation, it says, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have a right. How did we get the right back in Revelations to partake of the tree of life and to enter through the gates into that heavenly city? How did we get that back? Well, between Genesis and Revelation, there was a cross. Yes, yes. There was a cross. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And, and, and if you want to know how the change took place and was affected, amen, out of disobedience at the beginning that closed the way to the tree of life, to obedience at the end, that again, we gain entrance to the tree of life. Amen. What stands in the middle and in the midst, it was the cross. Yes. And in Romans 5 and 19, Amen. It'll start making a little better sense to you now. In Romans 5 and 19, uh, the scripture says there, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You all know who the one man's disobedience is talking about there? Yes, yes. It's talking about Adam. Amen. Through or for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, yes. many will be made righteous. Yeah. I tell you, when it, when, when it comes to spiritual things, uh, we, we underestimate the power of obedience. Yes. We underestimate it. 
And the scripture clearly shows that this thing, amen, we got into trouble because somebody was disobedient. Yes. Sir. yes. That's true. We got into trouble because somebody was disobedient. Yes, Lord. And we have the ability to get out of trouble because, amen, Jesus modeled perfect obedience. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. The God man. By one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, oh, I thank God for the cross. Yes. Thank God for the cross. Yes, and, 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 and in Philippians, we're giving you an overview of where we're going in this series. In Philippians 2, 8 and 9, uh, notice it says there, And being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself yes. and became what? Obedient, Obedient. Yes. to the point of death, yes. even the death of the cross. Yes. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Yes, Lord. Being found in the appearance, amen. Again, we're talking about who? We're talking about Jesus. Yes. He humbled himself. Yes. You see, uh, uh, th th there is, th there's something in our nature, our fallen nature, yes. to be contrary. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To be contrary. Th 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 it's something in our nature. And for some of us, amen, some of us have a stronger contrary nature than us. Yes, Lord. And, and we, we, we just don't want to cooperate. We just, you, you know, that's why they, you, they, they talk about uh, if you've got a picture window at a store, uh, you don't want to put a sign in your window that says, do not throw a brick and break this window. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Because you know what will happen if you do that? Yes. The very presence of that sign is going to stir up the rebel yeah. and the contrariness that's already, it, 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 the, the sign didn't cause it to be there, but the sign will provoke it yes, yes. to manifest itself. Yeah. And there's somebody that when they see that sign, they say, don't do it. They got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. They got to do it. So, uh, obedience and, and, and I'm talking about the spiritual weapon of obedience. Obedience, that's one of the reasons why when you look at the Ten Commandments, the first commandment with promise is honor thy, thy, thy father and thy mother. Yes. That thy days may be long in the, earth, in, in the earth which the Lord thy God gives. Right. It is the first commandment with promise. And what does it mean to honor your father and your mother? Well, part of it is to listen to them, yeah. amen, and, 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 and what, but also part of honoring them, not always, but part of it is obeying, yeah. especially when you're under uh, their authority and their care. Mm -hmm. And notice that it is the, the first commandment that has the promise of what? Longevity, Longevity of life. Yes, yes. In other words, there is that the, the, there's, there's stuff that comes with obedience. There's some good stuff. There's some spiritual things that take place, amen, with obedience. And Jesus tapped in. And so it said, being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, We're talking about the spiritual weapon of obedience. Yes, Lord. Jesus utilized it in order, amen, to bring life to us. In uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 5 and 8. 
Hebrews 5 and 8. Again, still talking about Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you, amen, uh, uh, how Jesus modeled it for us. And I want to show you the importance of it operating in our lives. In, in, in Hebrews 5 and 8, it says there, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience yes. by the things which he suffered. Yes. Yes. Look at verse 9. Now, now verse 8 uh, I tell you, that's a, that, that, that's a remarkable passage of scripture. It says, though he was a son, yet he learned. Do, do, do you all understand that uh, Jesus being God is omniscient? Yes. But when he, there, there's some things that when he uh, became a man, uh, that he cloaked, that he veiled. Uh, and, and it says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience yes. by the things that he suffered. Yes. And then verse 9 said, and having been perfected. That's remarkable right there. That's remarkable right there. And having been perfected. You see, the, the, the reason the enemy wants us to be contrary and, and rebellious and, 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 and even to, if God say don't do something, there's some of us that it's almost like that sign in the window. We got to do it. Yes, yes. There's, there, there's a fallen nature in us that, 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 that causes us to say, yeah, I know. I know the word of God or the Bible says that, but I'm grown. I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> there's something that, and, and there is a reason that the enemy, amen, wants to uh, always try to uh, uh, influence and, 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 and motivate us to disobey because he knows the consequences of disobedience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. He knows the damage. Yes. That disobedience, amen, just like obedience is a spiritual weapon, disobedience amen uh, 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 is a is, is a is an attack against us yes. so notice in verse 9 he said and having been perfected how was he perfected he was perfected by obedience yes. he became the author of eternal salvation to all who what Obey him. Yes. You see, he, 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 he went first. He was our example first. Yes. Anybody, you know, you know I, I think anybody that uh, 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 is one thing as human beings that we can discern and, and determine when something is not fair. And, and, and uh, how many out there, uh, it bristles you to see uh, stuff done or people acting a way that's not fair? How, how, how many of that, that, that bristles you, that, 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 that upsets you to see uh, uh, somebody uh, exercising authority or doing something and, and, and taking advantage of another person? That, 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 that goes against our grain. I don't like it. And I think some of you out there don't like it either. Where do you get that from? You ever, you ever stop and thought about where, where, where do you get the sense of what's fair and not fair? Where, where do you get that from? See, whether you know it or not, each and every one of us, whether we live for God or not, when we were having praise and worship a little bit earlier today, uh, and, and the exhortation say, let every, yes. everybody praise yes. God. Yes. Everybody ought to praise God. Yes, everybody ought to. Yes. And, and when I began to hear the ammunition, the ammunition yes. to say, everybody ought to praise. I thought about the Psalms that say, amen. Let everything that have breath. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. And, and whether you serve God or not, 
if you got breath. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. The breath you breathe. Yes. The breath of life that's in your body. Yes, Lord. Came from God. When Sister Charlotte was saying, I don't see why everybody don't praise him. A lot of times people don't realize that they owe their very life to the God that they're not serving. And the reason we're in the state we're in, it was because of disobedience. But Jesus was our example. Yes, yes. And though he was a son, yet he learned obedience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb now. But the reason I believe he had to learn obedience was because in the Godhead, everything answered to him. All right, all right. Jesus. Everything answered to him. Yes. Yes. Uh, he was the force in creation. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and all things were made by him and all things consisted. Yes. He, 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 he was the very force of yes. creation. Yes. But when he became a son yes. and the God man, yes. he had to humble himself. Amen. And though he was a son, yes. yet he learned obedience. Yes, Lord. And how did he learn it? By the things, By the things that he suffered. Yes, Lord. See, when you used to just say a word and it's done, uh, you know, you ain't got to suffer nothing. Yes, Lord. You, you, you speak it and, and, and I'm, I'm talking about that God realm now yes, yes. And, 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 and I'm just scratching the surface yes. but, but, but you don't suffer in the God realm yes, Lord. but when he became a son he yet he learned obedience because there was something he, he got hungry yes. he got thirsty yes. he, he, he got tired yes, Lord. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so there were things that in human form he suffered and one of the first tests that the enemy tried to uh, do was if you be the son of God make these stones break trying to get him to follow the direction of Satan to do a miracle to, to help himself and to initiate something that God didn't tell him to do that's good so he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Yeah. And having been perfected. And, 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 and I'm persuaded that a lot of what we go through as the people of God and a lot of the things that we go through, it's a test. Yes. Okay. It's a test. Yes, Lord. And the test is going, it is... Uh, are you still going to do what God said even though it's hard? Are you still going to do what God's word said even though it's hard? And where a lot of us fail the test is that uh, we're more concerned about our comfort yes. than doing the will of God. Yes, Lord. And having been perfected. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I want to be ready to do greater things. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Yes. You, God ain't going to have disobedient children Amen. with him. Amen. And, 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 and when I look at uh, the beauty of the salvation that's modeled in Jesus. Uh, Jesus models and he brings us back to a life of obedience to which uh, we'll be able to give glory to God, amen, because we'll be in alignment with him. Yes, Lord. And be able to receive the glory which the creator desires to make us partakers of him. Paradise, Calvary. Jesus. Heaven, yeah. all proclaim with one voice. 
child of God, the first and the last thing thy God asks of thee is simple, universal, unchanging obedience. Yes, Lord. Amen. Obedience. Yes. And if we would, if, if, if we would begin to grasp it, if we would begin to grasp it, we would begin to see some things open up for us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. We would begin to see favor extended to us. Yes, amen. We begin to see instead of diminishing, amen, things will be on the uptick, on the upswing. Yes. Amen. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Yes, Lord. So I just want to kind of do an overview of where we're going. Amen. And, uh, 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 and, and, and and make you a little bit more sensitive to that word and, 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 and discerning. And, and we need to begin to ask ourselves the questions. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, how do I stand in, in, in your sight? Uh, Lord, uh, uh, I want to be perfected. Lord, uh, I want my obedience to be perfected. Amen. So that uh, there's some things in my family. There's some things in my neighborhood. There's some things in my nation. There's some things in my church. There's some things that need to, amen, need to be straightened out. Yes, Lord. And I need to be in the position to utilize the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, Amen. but are mighty through God. Yes, Lord. And 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 uh, what I'm going to be talking about on on next week as we delve a little bit further into the spiritual weapon of obedience. And I'll just give you a little teaser. But one thing that I found out by studying the scripture, and we're going to look at what the scripture says in the Old Testament. Amen. And we're going to see a pattern that every time God gets ready to do a new thing. Say new thing. New thing. What I find in the pattern in the scripture, every time God gets ready to do a new thing, a new thing, there is the qualification of obedience. Yes, Lord. Yes. There's a, there's a qualification yeah. of obedience. Yes, and I'll be able to show it to you, amen, from the scripture in the Old Testament next week. Yes. And there's some of us that we need God to do a new thing. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're asking God to do a new thing. Yes, Lord. This month, we're asking God to do a new thing. Yes, Lord. And there's the qualification. Thank you, Jesus. And the